what's going on everybody this is Justin with me myself and dice and we're at the mini painting desk and today we're painting the hill troll from Lord of the Rings journeys in Middle Earth base set on this figure I really wanted to work on the skin a lot but before getting started I Xenothal primed him except I was out of black primer so I primed him in a dark gray and then a white on top and then went in and worked on some value sketching where you highlight and shade before you actually hit paint on the model. This is a good practice for learning where to shade and highlight and since our acrylic paint is translucent this does show through. Another reason why I like doing this practice sometimes, especially on bigger models, is when I don't have a specific color scheme picked out yet. There's no art for this specific model except in the actual app itself, so there's nothing to reference beforehand. I had gone online and looked at other paint schemes, but really wanted to just spend time with the model, coming up with my own. text here on the screen. I usually use these for my notes of what colors I use and I had to do an emergency export because of hard drive troubles. So you get to see my notes. They're embedded now. But anyway I did use Vallejo model color olive green on his skirt loincloth thing. see on the screen I'm using Vallejo model color intermediate blue this is a very desaturated blue that ends up looking to the eye more gray but is a nice cool color I really like this when I found it and tested it and it played a big part in deciding to paint this troll with a gray skin tone It's harder to see on the screen but in person I am putting it on pretty thin and letting the highlights and shadows do the work for me so if I were to turn them upside down this gray would be a lot darker underneath where I had value sketched in the shadows
revisiting the Vallejo model color camo olive green and making a gradient down to Vallejo model color khaki. This will provide my steps to highlight. I wanted this to look dusty and worn with a green undertone. I thought that the yellow brown would help add some highlights and contrast. Now on the front of his loincloth he actually has a scaled pattern that's patched together and I wasn't sure exactly what to do with this and as we get going I start to change my mind on my color scheme with that. So working my way up the gradient, I'm really just looking at the Zenithal highlights and pre-shading and highlighting that I did before, and I can still see them through the green, so I'm pretty much just going back over those a little less each step. But here's where I started to question that scaled part, the different texture, it just wasn't really working, so I started thinking of what I could do different as I was highlighting this. see in my highlighting here that I am avoiding that bottom portion with the scales. I'm just highlighting the clothy portions. I still really didn't know what to do with that so I just decided I would go through my routine and layer up my highlights and deal with that when I finished. is the highest of my highlights and then change my mind. I decided to use the pure khaki and repaint the whole cloth section and start over on it. I decided that the scale part you can see at the bottom of this cloth here and on the front, you leave those dark and that green color. 
I also left the holes that dark green color in his cloth as well. I just really liked where this color was going and decided that bringing this lighter and starting at a lighter position was going to benefit the contrast of the overall model a lot more. So one of the things I love about painting minis is that you can make mistakes or you can change your mind on something and just paint over it. And we're working with such thin paints that it's not going to ruin the model if you change your mind. So this allows me to give the perfectionist in me a break and to try new things because I can always just paint over it later. And that's a very liberating feeling when doing something creative like this. then pull out Citadel color Bane Blade Brown and start using that as a highlight. And rather than making a gradient, this is so close to the khaki that I just start adding ivory into it to make the highlight colors step by step. finally starting to come together. I like the contrast that I've created. It gives it kind of a motley look, but I really feel like I was on the right track here. I don't know what kind of animal has green scale hide like that, but hey, it's a made-up fantasy world. It works.
and originally engraved from Citadel colors to the intermediate blue that we began with on the skin. And I'm pretty much painting over everything but the deepest recesses. I'm even going to use this on his scales. My idea was that I would bring up his scales to a certain point and then stop with the scales and continue going up with the skin colors. I thought that this would help them blend together cohesively. second part of my gradient that I decided to leave the scales where they were. I really liked the darker color that they became and then I could highlight the skin up to a much lighter gray. Unlike your normal lighting from above where you highlight the highest points, here because the scales are harder, leaving them a darker color gives them that more set look while highlighting his skin gives it a lot more flexibility and variety. took my time and just really just enjoyed highlighting his skin. I don't get to do rounded muscles and skin like this very often. Usually things have more clothes on them, or more hard corners, and more textures. So it was really fun just to take my time and work on highlighting things like how his chest sticks out further from a light source above and his belly but yet he has abs which is interesting and he has a lot of cool scars and that's just really fun to me to work on that and I'm really proud of how it came out it wasn't the smoothest blend but definitely one of the smoother blends that I had done to a tabletop standard at this point
after I finished his skin, I avoided the bottom part long enough. So I came in with Vallejo Game Color Ink Black Green and tried to bring out those scales a little bit more. It didn't really work. The scales are not as deep as I wish they had been for this kind of effect. But I used it also to line the area between the two cloths where they come together and darken some other recesses. So kind of frustrated still at that bottom part, I decided to work more on the skin and push my highlights a lot further, test myself and see how far I could push them and still be happy with it. So I mixed up Fenrisian Gray in a gradient to Sky Gray from Vallejo Model Color, which is a very, very light gray. And I continued to work on the highlighted areas that I really wanted to just draw attention to on his skin.
with my highest highlights which is just pure sky gray and I'm really just trying to hit the highest points and the little scar areas and the areas on his face that I really want to draw attention to. that usually I try to do his tongue and the inside of a model's mouth before I do highlights on the face but I go in very carefully with the trusty screamer pink from Citadel I follow this up with my favorite off-white Vallejo model color ivory for his teeth and this is where it really just started to pop for me Running out of time, I start to use Citadel Contrast Wildwood for the wood on his club, which actually has a lot of nice wood grain detail on it, and this contrast paint is really good at bringing out that detail. Here I thin down some Dragonoff Nightshade from Citadel Shade Line and try to bring out the crevices and cracks in between all of his scaling without really darkening it or making it too blue. I was very happy with how this turned out too. attack the rock on his club, I start with the base of Citadel's contrast color Grift Charger Gray, which is a really light gray. I also use this to shade some of the creases in his scales where the skin folds. I decided to do the ropes around the rock with Skeleton Horde because I knew that I could go back and add layers to it and darken it. I also thought that his teeth could use a slight tone down so while I had the skeleton hoard out I used it as a slight wash over his teeth. I then pull out Citadel Dawnstone, which is one of my favorite colors to use for rocks, and I use a trusty makeup brush and dry brush the stone on top. I pull out Citadel's Othuan Gray and another trusty makeup brush, because all of them are trusty when it comes to dry brushing, and I concentrate more on the tops and the side edges closest to the top with this color. I then take a smaller makeup brush and try to get just the edges and just the highest tips of the rock with a little bit of ivory. I'm happy with the rock I go back into my skeleton hoard and darken it down where the dry brushing hit it. Mm -hmm. 
And as in previous videos, we based this guy with Geek Gaming Scenics ready-made basings, put a couple of tufts of grass and some strategically placed rocks, grass is from Army Painter, and we called it done. After the ink dried on the scaly part, I really liked the contrast. It really helped bring out the scales in it. And the basing really finished this off. I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. He was a lot of fun to paint, a lot of fun to work on. If you enjoyed this content, think about hitting that like, smashing that subscribe, and tapping that bell icon so that you're notified when new videos go up. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.